it comes very close to a de facto declaration of war. But of course, this is a U.S. project. But there, Europe's paying the price. The U.K., German industry, inflation, and soaring energy prices, everything else. They don't, they don't care. I mean, and, and you do see a certain amount of disquiet among NATO uh, members, because the, 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 the fundamental point to remember is that the U.S. has no plan. There is no uh, end. They, they don't. And this was also true in Afghanistan and Iraq. The, the, the only goal is to perpetuate it. But they haven't thought about the consequences and they haven't thought about how to terminate the conflict. Indeed, they don't want to terminate the conflict. You talk about buying these weapons. Remember that about 40 percent at least of the money that is appropriated for Ukraine goes directly to the U.S. arms manufacturers. This is also true when we give foreign aid to Egypt, when we give foreign aid to Israel, $3 billion a year. A, a huge percentage of that is mandated to go towards U.S. weapons manufacturers, and they have to buy their weapons, whether it's the F-16 or anything else. And that's also true with uh, the aid, military aid for Ukraine. Eisenhower did warn us about this, uh, this uh, overweening power, even back then in the 1950s, of what he called the military-industrial complex and it's become a truly gargantuan monster by now isn't it yeah i mean and this is how late empires die as arnold tonby pointed out it's unchecked unregulated unaccountable militarism and military adventurism remember the the military is responsible along with the political leadership for just one military debacle after another starting with vietnam whether it's iraq syria uh, Afghanistan or anything else. Nobody's ever held accountable. Uh, you know, untold trillions of dollars, I don't know what the final figure, seven trillion. And then, of course, the the suffering on the part of innocents in Iraq, in, in Syria and Libya and everywhere else who are, to this day are still paying the price. And look at Afghanistan. I mean, it's it's horrific. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the empire essentially uh, funnels all of its resources, 850 billion. That's that's a rough figure. There's actually we spend more on that when you uh, count Veterans Affairs and you count the nuclear weapons program, which is separate from the budget. You're close to a trillion dollars a year. Meanwhile, the United States is collapsing internally, uh, and this is this of course replicates the dying days of any empire. The tragedy is that as we go down, we're bringing so many people with us. But the, the Pentagon's unaccountable. The, it is a political power in and of itself that no one, not Bernie Sanders, no one can confront it. Anybody, the few brave politicians who get up and speak the truth to the war industry, like Dennis Kucinich, are a race. It was the Democratic Party that he was in the House of Representatives. He didn't vote, never voted for a military appropriation bill, constantly called out the war industry, and the Democratic Party uh, redistrict his district to essentially drive him out of the house, which worked. And then when he ran last year for mayor of Cleveland, they pumped in, we don't know, because it's dark money, but millions upon millions of money to defeat him. Uh, it, the only two national candidates for president that we have ever had since the end of World War II that have taken on the war industry, Henry Wallace, 1948, Roosevelt's former vice president, and George McGovern in 1972, were destroyed in a bipartisan coalition. As soon I knew McGovern. As soon as McGovern got the nomination, the hierarchy of the Democratic Party joined forces with the hierarchy of the Republican Party under Nixon uh, to make sure McGovern was uh, defeated in a landslide, as he was, with all, all the dirty tricks and everything else. So the, the, the military-industrial complex, which you're right, everyone should go back and listen to that farewell address by Eisenhower, it's, un, it's not only uncontrollable, but it's a political force at this point that, no, that any politician who attempts to confront, and we used to have a few decades ago figures like Proxmire and others in the Senate who at least call out waste or call out you know, redundant weapon systems or weapon systems that cost overruns or weapon systems, that's all gone. I mean, the, the, the last Pentagon budget, uh, the Congress voted to give uh, the, the, the Pentagon $45 uh, billion more than the Biden, uh, the Biden administration requested. It's just insane.